Hey guys, welcome to my updated succession guide. I know you've been waiting for a long time, my apologies, now let's get into it. All timestamps and links to my other videos will be in the description below. However, I recommend watching through the entire video to fully grasp my explanations. If you're brand new to Succession, I recommend watching my earlier Succession guide to get started. When you feel like you've learned the fundamentals and cancels, you're welcome to start here. Each class has certain skills that always deal a significant amount of damage. In order to understand my combo routes, I always try to optimize for the most damage. Of course, there will be fun combos, so keep a lookout for those too. How a Succession or Awakening Ninja generates majority of their damage comes from a few things. High crit rate or 100% crit rate skills. Generally speaking, skills that have 100% crit rate are always high in damage output due to the nature of buffs. Kron Meal provides 5% crit damage. Garamuth in your Dandy provides 3% crit damage. Often, Zarka and Blackstar provide 2% crit damage. Tier 3 add ons also provide 5% crit damage. Crit damage add ons on rings also provide 3% crit damage each. Corrupted crit gems provide 10% crit damage each gem, and you also get a 2% as a set bonus. The Carolyn crit buff from Heidel also provides 10% crit damage, you just need 50 Amity to unlock the buff. And Giant's Draft, it provides 10% to all special attack modifiers, which includes crit damage. You could also use elixirs to provide crit damage, but I'm too lazy to pop 20 different elixirs every respawn. The main reason why accuracy modifiers are so valuable is because in today's gear meta, there's a lot of full pen evasion players that have high evasion passives like Striker or Hashushu. So in order to dent these guys, you want to have skills that have high accuracy. Like Heart Aiming, Crescent Slash, or Shadow Stomp. CCs that apply damage modifiers at the same time are another great source of damage. Air Attack is one of the most powerful modifiers in the game. If you float a target and apply Air Attack, you can increase your damage as opposed to using the same skill but on a grounded target. If you don't understand these modifiers, please refer to my original Awakening Guide, Timestamp for Special Attack Modifiers, to get a better understanding of them. DP and Evasion debuffs are very important versus any target. It's how you reduce their defenses to allow your skills to deal significantly more damage. This applies to all classes in the game, not just Ninja. You can also stack a DP or Evasion debuff add-on on top of the Skills debuff. Ninja specializes in fast mobility and burst damage, meaning a skill like Shadow Stomp has all of their hits apply at the same time, whereas Chaos Spree applies damage in slow ticks. Here are Succession Ninja's primary sources of damage. Succession Crescent Slash has a high accuracy rate for evasion-based targets, and a float, which benefits from air attack, unlocked by leveling Crescent Slash to the absolute rank. It also has a few animation cancels. Succession Ankle Cutter. The skill isn't normally used for comboing, it's mainly used for SA trading due to having a DP debuff and 100% crit rate. It allows you to trade into your opponent in your favor, unlocked by leveling Ankle Cutter to Absolute. Shadow Stomp. It has a high accuracy rate, fast burst damage, a built-in float and air attack modifier, and can also be animation cancelled from several different skills. Blade Spin. It has fast burst damage with air and down attack modifiers depending on the CC used prior. Beheading the Dead. Now the skill doesn't do amazing damage on its own, but it's a utility based skill that stuns and debuffs the opponent allowing your other skills to hit much harder. The normal version allows you to cancel it instantly. It still provides the stun and the debuffs, however you lose out on a little bit of damage. The animation cancelled version allows you to animate the entire beheading faster, but you risk getting CC due to being locked in the animation. Malice and Evasive Shriek in Malice. They both have 100% crit, short cooldowns, they stiff, and can be comboed together in rapid succession. Fatal Blow. It has 100% crit, 
air attack modifier, and it also provides a plus 12 melee AP on cast. PA did a great job fixing the skill, as before Succession was released, it only applied air attack once, even though the skill hits twice. Now if you use Fatal Blow Flow, it could potentially apply 4 hits of air attack, increasing the damage significantly. Shuriken Flight. It has fast burst damage under certain conditions. With speed attack buffs, using Shuriken Flight after Fatal Blow speeds up the animation than if you used it on its own. Illusion of Restraint. It has 100% crit and a down attack modifier. It's great for finishing off combos. Now these skills may be primary sources of damage, but that doesn't mean you can't style the other succession skills. The beauty of combos is that you could do anything you want. These are the general PvP add-ons I use for all content. I sometimes swap out Black Moon Knight for Red Rain with the DP debuff and Bleed if I'm doing a large scale or Arena of Arsha. I use Beheading with the DP debuff add-on because you could stack it with its inherent debuff, giving you minus 30 DP debuff. I've been changing my add-ons a lot lately, as I've been trying to figure out what's best suited for my playstyle, so tune into my streams to see if I've changed them. Here are my PvE add-ons for when I grind. Human damage works at Bloody Monastery, and it stacks with monster damage, so make sure you have those. Skill enhancements, or Rabams. I use Oni Shadow to allow myself to move while in stealth. It's a very good tool for large skill and Arena of Arsha. It also has a tiny iframe. Illusion of Restraint for another damage noob, that also provides a frontal guard and an iframe upon blocked hits. Ghost Slash provides a great forward guard utility for succession. It allows us to block debuffs, which is very important. It also gives us a short dash and can be linked into Ghost Step for fluid movement. Alright, so here's my current gear and gems. I'm running an Evasion Hybrid build. The reason why I use Griffin over Heave is because after full Pen C9, Griffin is a tankier helmet due to the damage reduction you receive as well as majority of players in today's meta have obtained accuracy accessories to combat against evasion targets. So, in order to be tanky in endgame, you'll want to have a high evasion and damage reduction, as well as high DP brackets. If you are not full Pen C9, I recommend the Pen Heave Helmet, that will last you a long time. The reason why I use Kudum and Liebers is because Succession Ninja has a bit more evasion than Awakening due to the passives. This allows you to be tankier when SA treating your opponents. I also use Kudum because of the extra ignore resistance against resist stacking players. The monster AP also helps grinding and I never have to swap from Nuver. I chose the Blackstar main hand because I grind a lot, but Azark is perfectly fine for PvP. Ninjas have low accuracy modifiers so it's not worth using it often. I use the Tri Dandy C19 because it provides 12 accuracy and because you only receive 30% of your Awakening AP to your main hand AP, you don't really need a pen Awakening weapon. You save a lot of money this way. This is under the assumption that you never will ever play Awakening. You only play Succession, so keep that in mind. I use the crit add-ons for rings because I value damage over tankiness. I will probably use the AP add-on for the belt whenever I get it. I know the DR add-on provides more stats total, but again, I'm already using Akutum and Libras for tankiness, and now I just want to optimize for more damage without being too squishy. My next gear goals are going to be for Pen Turo Belt and Pen Crescent Ring to obtain 309 AP with Kuda. After that, depending on how my damage feels in Node War, I'll either go 2 Pen Distortions and swap to a Lunar Necklace to maintain 309 AP Kuda, or swap to C20 in all of my armors. But we'll have to see when I reach that point. If you're a newer player, I would not suggest going for my build until you're pushing Pen Armors. If you feel as though you aren't doing that much damage on Succession, Nuver and Begs isn't really a bad idea. It's what I used to run. You'll be very squishy when you use Super Armor, so just keep that in mind. This build starts to flourish as you push over 289 AP with Kudum. Otherwise, you will lack a bit of damage for endgame players, and will have to focus heavily on comboing your targets in order to kill. Super Armor Cycling is a technique that will help you survive much longer in large-scale PvP. The idea behind it is you use movement skills combined with your protected skills to keep yourself from being CC'd. It's not necessarily super armors only. Here's an example of super armor cycling. As you can see, I'm constantly keeping myself protected while cycling through my skills. There are many ways of super armor cycling, and there is no perfect super armor cycle, as it's dependent on how many cooldowns you have left. So I recommend practicing this in RBF and Node Wars to get better at it. Experience will polish your survivability, so get into RBF and Node Wars and start practicing. Here's an exercise on how to practice super armor cycling. Grab an archer friend and have them shoot at you constantly while trying to block and absorb everything. If you get CC'd, restart. Try not to hit the archer and focus on keeping yourself protected. 
You'll notice that I'm using movement followed by an immediate super armor that lingers like Succession Ankle Cutter or Crescent Slash. Then I weave Ghost Step in between movement skills and super armors to constantly stay close to my target. I also try to aim my forward guards always in front of my target so I can never get hit behind me. Whenever I run out of skills, I use Shadow Slash, Red Rain, and Block Jump, but I sometimes delay it to allow for my other cooldowns to come up. If you don't know the skills by muscle memory, or recognizing it right away on the screen, it means you're still a beginner, and you need to watch my first succession guide to better understand the skills explained. This is one of the most important exercises for a succession ninja. After you feel comfortable against an archer, go straight into RBF and try to apply it. The longer you can live, the better you are. Succession Ninja has some of the fastest engages in the game. Alert Sense allows us to move instantly forward, giving us the opportunity to catch a lot of our targets by surprise. These are some movement strings and engages to help you better approach a target. Make sure you slow down the video as all of these are done in real time speed so you can understand the pacing of these sequences. Like super armor cycling, there is no perfect movement string or engage, so your job is to get into battle arena, RBF, or node wars and practice them. So what happens when you go for an engage and it misses? Remember super armor cycling? Here are some ways to learn how to disengage properly. I use the black moonlight engage, then block jump. In succession it's an animation cancel, followed by the WW input, then ankle cutter flow. Make sure you turn around and face your opponent, and linger the super armor a bit, followed by the ghost step into dark frenzy for a frontal card. If you don't know what the WW input is, please refer to the timestamp for WW input in my original Awakening Guide. I use the Double Malice Stomp Engage into Ghost Step, Ankle Cutter Flow, linger the Super Armor a bit, then Ghost Step again into Shadow Slash. The idea behind disengaging is that when you go for any engage, if it misses, you want to immediately go into your Super Armor Cycle, that way you're always keeping yourself protected. However, like super armor cycling and movement strings, there is no perfect disengage. It's usually based on what cooldowns you have left. So, you guessed it, get back into battle arena, RBF, or node wars and start practicing. Now you understand what deals damage, how to build your gear, what add-ons to run, super armor cycling, engage and disengages, you're ready to learn some? If you guys remember Danem's old combo from my Awakening Guide, the idea behind it was to DP debuff your opponent with Ankle Cutter. Succession requires the same philosophy, however, you don't need to do an Ankle Whiff anymore, because we have a much more efficient skill. In this new type of combo sequence, I will show you how to apply DP debuffs while keeping the flow of combos fast and efficient. I start off with a grab, to land the first CC, a bound, Malice as you're about to land to cancel the animation of Malice, Ghost Greeting into Forward Fatal Blow, into Beheading, this applies your DP debuff, Evasive Shriek and Malice cancel into Alert Stance. Camera Turn, Shadow Stomp, which applies your second CC, a Float. Blade Spin, Space Bar to speed up the animation. Fox Claw, Black Moonlight, into Illusion of Restraint. Double Malice, Alert Stance, Shadow Stomp to apply the first CC, a Float. Blade Spin, Camera Turn, Shadow Slash, Heart Aiming. Ghost Step, Crescent Slash to apply your second CC, a Float. Floor Sweeping, Shriek and Flight, Left Mouse Button, into Illusion of Restraint. I start off with Smokescreen, my first CC, a stun, into Alert Stance, Beheading. Now if you stun within 1 second of the previous stun, it will be negated, allowing you to go for this technique. Into Boss Slaughter, the second CC, a float, into Ford Fatal Blow to get all that juicy air attack damage. Followed by Shadow Slash Heart Aiming, into Malice, Evasive Shriek and Malice, Alert Stance, into Shadow Stomp, and then Blade Spin. I start off with the grab to apply the first CC, a bound. Then Beheading to apply the debuffs, followed by the Malice Cancel into Illusion of Restraint. Then Evasive Shriek and Malice, Alert Stance, Camera Turn, Ghost Greeting, Black Moonlight to apply Stiff. This isn't a primary CC, so it doesn't go over the limit yet. Then Shadow Stomp to apply my second CC, a Float. Then Camera Turn, Forward Fatal Blow to get the juicy air attack damage. Blade Spin, then Floor Sweeping Shriek and in Flight into LMB, into Shadow Slash Heart Aiming into Malice. 
I stealth engage with Oni Shadow, and then Ghost Up to get behind them. Shadow Slash Beheading to apply my first CC, a stun, double Malice, Alert Stance to give yourself a frontal guard to block a potential enemy attack, Camera Turn Shadow Stomp to apply your second CC, a float, Camera Turn again into Forward Fatal Blow, Blade Spin Spacebar to speed up the animation, Shriek of Flight into Illusion of Restraint, then Ghost Step Red Rain to apply the finishing dot. Double Malice Engage into Alert Stance to apply your first non-primary CC, a stiff, Shadow Stomp to apply the first CC, a float, Camera Turn, Blade Spin Spacebar to speed up the animation, Forward Fatal Blow into Shriek and Flight to apply the second CC, a float. Unfortunately, it also applies an Air Smash to you to Shriek and Flight's second hit, but you want to use Shriek and Flight for the fast Super Armor Flow. If you have high AP, this combo works great. Then Illusion of Restraint, Ghost Step into Red Rain to apply the finishing dot. I start with Ninja Step to get behind them. Smoke screen to apply the first CC, a stun, alert stance, beheading. Since you use beheading within one second of smoke screen, it won't stack the stun. Then ghost step, double malice, alert stance, camera turn, shadow stomp to apply the second CC, a float, camera turn again, forward fatal blow to get the air attack, blade spin spacebar to speed up the animation, shriek and flight, left mouse button, and then illusion of restraint, ghost step into red rain to apply the finishing dot. I start off with Red Rain to debuff, Blade Spin to apply tier 3 add-ons, Shadow Slash Hard Aiming into Forward Fatal Blow to apply Monster AP add-on, Double Malice Alert Stance to Frontal Guard Oncoming Attacks, Camera Turn Shadow Stomp, Shriek and Flight LMB, this will apply a lot of back attacks hitting very hard, Fox Claw Moonlight, Fox Claw again, Beheading, Illusion of Restraint into Malice, Ghost Claw, Ghost Step, and Crescent Slash Blow. The last few skills are interchangeable depending on your grind spot. Here's the most essential exercise for you to master any combo. Go into Battle Arena, find a dummy, that way if you don't have any friends, you can still practice. Don't worry about properly CCing the dummy, it's been bugged for 5 years. If you bound the dummy, you can't float them on the second CC. PA, please fix this or give us a training mode that resets cooldowns so we can practice combos. Alright, let's break down the full combo into 2 or 3 parts. Then repeat the first part 5 times in a row. If you mess up once, you have to restart back from zero until you can do it perfectly 5 times without making a mistake. When you've completed this task, you add another part into the combo and repeat it again until you've mastered it 5 times without making a mistake. You keep adding parts until the entire combo is completed for the first time. When you can do the entire combo 5 times in a row without making a mistake, you will have engraved the combo into your muscle memory. This type of exercise was derived from fighting games, which allowed me to master combos at a very efficient pace. Prime Blade Spin vs Absolute Blade Spin. You'll notice that in some of my combos, I use Prime Blade Spin, and in the others, I use Absolute. Here are the main differences of each Blade Spin. Prime Blade Spin allows you to animation cancel Fox Claw and Block Jump. It's stronger in PvE, and it allows Succession e-buff to proc 3 dots on cast. And it also has a shorter cooldown than Absolute Blade Spin, 10 seconds. Absolute Blade Spin allows you to Ghost Step, Malice, or Smoke Screen out of it immediately, giving you a very fast super armor. However, its cooldown is longer at 13 seconds. Majority of the times when you use Prime Blade Spin, you use the spacebar to speed up the animation. Since the accuracy and PvP damage reduction nerfs to Prime Blade Spin, the damage has become quite weak. And in most cases, Absolute Blade Spin is a stronger burst than Prime Blade Spin with the spacebar input. But you can choose what you like more, it's entirely up to you. I prefer the Absolute Blade Spin as it grants me a faster playstyle. Block Jump can be cancelled on a majority of skills in succession, allowing you to disengage if you're in a tight spot. Foscal was recently reworked so that it applies the float on the animation cancelled version, allowing you to go for it as an engage or counterplay. Beheading still applies the debuffs and stun even if you cancel the normal version. You do lose a bit of damage, but in return you gain a bit more safety. 
Boss Slaughter is one of Succession Ninja's most valuable tools. If you CC a target with Malice from far away, you don't have many options to gap close. Boss Slaughter is always a great option. I always press Shift F and then immediately tap W in order to proc the float version of Boss Slaughter. You could also use the hotbar version and just press W afterwards. I am currently using the Noosa Shard with the Dark Martial Helmet. The Noosa Shard can be found in the Pearl Shop. The Dark Martial Outfit was an event-only costume that comes a couple times a year, so be on the lookout for it. Personally, I think Succession has a pretty solid kit. However, if someone were to ask me if I could change anything or ask for buffs while being fair, I would probably suggest some form of frontal guard on a new skill or current skill, maybe allow Prime Bladesman to have the same speed properties as Absolute Bladesman. Being able to cancel out immediately, that way I don't have to choose between Prime and Absolute. Ghost Slash needs a slight buff, maybe allow for Alert Sense after cast, that might be kinda broken, or being able to link Shadow Slash, Smoke Screen, or Ninja Step after it, or give Ghost Slash the ability to animation cancel Crest Slash or Ankle Cutter. A shorter cooldown will help drastically as Succession Ninja suffers from getting debuffed too heavily during Super Armors, maybe 10 seconds? I'd ask to revert the nerf on Alert Sense giving us the original distance, or revert the Malice cooldown, but people might get mad. Personally, I think both specs are strong nowadays. Awakening has received many buffs through their grind speed to rival Succession. They also have two very strong bond skills in Katana Shower and Serpent Ascension, as well as a new skill called Flashing Light that's a powerful filler with an evasion debuff. I think Succession has more protected damage overall, and Awakening has better pinpoint damage with their Serpent Ascension and Flashing Light. However, Succession has better burst mobility, whereas Awakening has more protected safe movement and a spammable frontal guard. They are both strong in large scale and 1v1s. Personally, I prefer Succession as I love the movement along with the sound of smokescreen and alert stance. But you can play whatever you like. I wanted to give a shout out to all the people that helped me. I also wanted to give a special shout out to my boy Toyohisa from Europe, a great ninja that won the Arsha 1v1 tournament. And as always, thank you guys for watching.